imagine that it's a bright, beautiful day and you have just finished a meal with your five-year-old son. You decide to take him to the park to play. Now imagine that there is a five-year-old boy who is locked up in a dark room for days. He doesn't know when's the next time he's going to get to see the sunlight or the next time he's going to get to eat some meal. Now imagine that your, your five-year-old son falls down at the park and he scrapes his knee. You quickly come to his rescue to help him. Now imagine the boy who's locked up in the, in the dark for days, hasn't had a meal, or gets beaten every day severely, and there's no one to come to his rescue. With the experience I've had of being a pediatric nurse, I've learned to recognize the signs of child abuse. I'm proud to say that I was able to help a child suffering from neglect by calling the Children's um, Child Protective Services in San Diego. Hello everyone, my name is Afshin Kamaluddin, and today I will be talking about the signs of abuse, how to recognize signs, and also the importance of taking action and the importance of preventing child abuse. Let's begin today by talking about the signs that a lot of the children tend to have when they're going through child abuse. Child abuse is more than just bruises and broken bones. Other types of child abuse are emotional, sexual, and neglect. The JoyfulHeartFoundation.org lists signs of, of child abuse to look for if you suspect child abuse. For example, physical abuse. The signs you want to look for physical abuse in a child is unexplained cuts, bruises, welts, or even bruises in the shape of objects. You also want to check to see if a child is flinching at any sudden movements or gets scared easily at loud, loud sounds, or if a child is having a hard time coming back home from school, is too afraid. And also if a child is wearing long sleeve shirt in a hot summery day trying to cover up his scars. In emotional abuse, what you want to look for is if a child is, seems depressed, is withdrawn, shows a lot of anxiety, and also shows extreme behavior patterns such as either if the child is too aggressive or too passive, or if the child is too demanding or too compliant. Also, if a child has lost complete trust in their parents or guardians. In sexual abuse, what you want to look for in a child is if a child is having trouble walking or sitting, or if a child is using a lot of sexual languages, or if a child displays a lot of sexual acts in public. And again, if a child has lost trust in their parents or guardian. The signs you want to look for in neglect to see if a child is having uh, poor hygiene, body odor, or if a child is wearing ill-fitted clothes, and if also if a child has untreated illnesses such as a common cold that's lasting for more than a week, even months at a time. Now that we have recognized the signs of child abuse, let's look at what we can do to prevent child abuse, as well as the statistics. Child abuse is a national epidemic. It's actually a pandemic. It's a growing problem all over the world. Every year, 3.3 million reports of child abuse are made in the United States. We lose close to five children from child abuse. Every 10 seconds, there's a report done on child abuse in the United States. The United States holds the highest record of child abuse. Approximately 80% of children who die from child abuse are under the age of 4. Child abuse occurs at every socioeconomic levels across ethnic and culture lines with all religions and all levels of education. 
childhelp.org talks about the consequences of child abuse. Children that have suffered from child abuse tend to have high risk of teen pregnancies. They also engage in unprotected sex. Therefore, they have a lot of increased rates of sexual transmitted diseases. They also engage in a lot of alcohol and substance abuses. And there's a high risk of children or parents treating their children with child abuse. Therefore, it's a vicious cycle and we need to do something to stop it. The importance of preventing child abuse. Prevention of child abuse helps to attribute positive growth of child self-esteem, self-confidence, self-love and respect, and every child deserves to feel this way. Now that we have, now that we are aware of the importance of preventing child abuse, let's see the ways that we can get involved and help out a child. How can we stop child abuse? Angelsplace.com suggests ways for people to get involved. First thing you want to do is educate yourself. There are great websites out there that are for child abuse. It has loads of information for you all to uh, take a part in. For example, some of these websites are preventchild.org, volunteermatch.org, and also dayofthechild.org. Again, these websites have great information for us to go on and learn off of. Dr. Rachel Berger, a pediatrician, reported on CBS News on September 19, 2011. There has been increased rate of shaken baby syndrome as well as traumatic head injuries caused to ch children. And most of these reports have been occurring in low-income families. Because we're facing such bad economical times, a lot of these parents tend to take their anger out on their children. Therefore, a lot of child abuse is going on right now. The rates have gone really high. So how can we help these parents and in the community? For example, if you have family or relatives or even friends that have children, we can ask them to see if they, will, they would like us to babysit their children, even once or twice a week. That's going to help relieve a lot of these parents' stress level. Therefore, they're going to be less likely to take their anger out on their children. Now that we have learned ways to get involved, let's find out how we could take action. Many people are too scared to take action if they suspect child abuse and neglect. Maybe because of uncertainty or because of lack of understanding or information. I hope I was able to teach everybody and inform everybody of the signs to recognize in child abuse and also when to take action. So let's all make a difference and help an innocent child out. Call the National Child Abuse Hotline 1-800-4-A-CHILD. I hope I was able to urge each and every one of you today to help make a difference in a child's life. Become the voice of an innocent child there is an expression that says, it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a village to prevent child abuse. Before I leave tonight, I have a short video to, for you all to look at. Thank you so much.